الشاحنات وعم ما عم ننفض كل ساعة عم يلقطونا كنا بسوريا لما ماتوا كل الناس أمي جابتني من الشاحنة تعالج إجري كيف؟ هذا من حرب ما؟ من سوريا كنت عم بلعب برا عم إجاني الجيش قال لي تعال أشتري لك شيء أم رحت أم خطفوني أم داسوا علي بالسيارة ما بعرف شو بدي أقول له أنا ضايع هون مع أمي Tensions have been rising in the port of Calais in just last week. Migrants in Calais chase after a lorry bound for England. One man leaps it's aboard. Helped in. It's in broad daylight. With striking ferry workers causing travel chaos in the French port of Calais, TV news has been full of dramatic scenes, queuing lorries and desperate migrants trying to break into them to get to the UK. We've got to do more to make sure that Britain is a less easy place for illegal migrants to come to. But away from the motorways and port, something different is happening in Cali. The new migrant camp is growing fast and becoming permanent. Those living here are part of Europe's growing refugee crisis. Huge numbers of people fleeing poverty and conflict. Now they face a new challenge, life in the jungle. بياكلوا فينا ما بيسووا لك طيب واكلهم هنا وانت لك الدجاج زي الورق هذه وجبه واحده في اليوم سوينا الحمام هنا ممكن يجي يصوره فادل was a student in Sudan but was forced to flee in 2011 after years stuck in Libya he arrived in the jungle six months ago حتى الحبوب بتاعت البندوره الصداع دي ممكن نتبادلها بالات الطباخ ممكن الات الطباخه like many of the Muslims here, he is fasting for Ramadan. No one is counting how many people live here, but most agree it's at least 3,000. People arrive every day, and each time we come back, the jungle feels more and more permanent. Conditions here are hard, but everywhere there are signs of a community striving to create something like a normal life. Cafes and food shops have opened. Spotting a demand for bicycles, a friend of Fadl's who is a car mechanic in Sudan has set up the camp's own bike and rental repair service. This shack, built out of pallets, will soon be a school. And here will be teacher table. Here we we'll put one blackboard. You have window here, and uh, we try our best. You know. Many of those who flee Eritrea are Christians, and they have been persecuted because of their faith. In the jungle, they are building a church. You need some time, some quality time with yourself. You know, you can come here, you can read, you can pray, you can think. So you are fresh mind, and it will be easy for you. Because this is uh, your God house can be anywhere. David's family left Eritrea after his father died and spent years as a refugee in Sudan. His life there was so desperate, he set out for the UK, leaving his two-year-old son behind. I want to bring him if I can. And I want to be a good father for him. It's hard, it's very hard. But thanks to God, I'm still happy in the life. David has promised himself that when the church is nearly built, he will try for England. The church had a priest, but he didn't want to wait. If there is no priest, then you pray by yourself. yourself. Has that happened to priests before? Yeah, there, is, there was one guy, he got to British, so we don't have a priest. Even as the camp becomes permanent, in the jungle, everything is transient. It seems that the um, word has got around camp that there's a traffic jam building on the motorway that runs across the top of the camp. And it's caused quite a lot of interest. A lot of the people are now running up, moving up towards the, the lorries to see if they can get on the back. Migrants regularly complain about heavy-handed treatment by the police. Officers frequently use pepper spray. And funded with millions of pounds of British money, the authorities' other main response is to step up security. Yesterday we were here and um, there were groups of migrants intermittently running up this bank from the camp trying to get past the police, onto the motorway and onto the back of lorries. Today we've come back and we found that the authorities are hastily erecting what looks like a fairly intimidating fence. It's going to run presumably from where you can see now all the way along here up the side of the motorway, 
closing off the camp with barbed wire along the top of it. Obviously the idea is to try and stop migrants getting up this bank and onto the motorway and onto the lorries. Fadl and his friends are preparing for iftar when they will break their fast. One meal a day is provided on site. Tonight they've been bought extra food by the local Algerian community. Fadl, like many others in the camp, has claimed asylum in France. But with no support, he has little choice but to live in the jungle for months while his claim is processed. For those that are trying to get to Britain, it's a big night. At the entrance to the Eurotunnel, the queues of trucks are still backed up after strikes close the terminal. It's quite a strange scene that we've got down here in front of us. There are scores of migrants trying to get on the back of these lorries that are queuing for the Eurotunnel. There are lorry drivers getting quite irate coming out to stop them. There are police getting involved. I've never really seen anything like it on the approach to the Eurotunnel. Why do you want to go to the UK? Uh, education. Yeah. Um, freedom. Um, work. Britain still takes far fewer asylum seekers than France. Nobody knows how many people have got through in the past six weeks and how many will claim asylum. But we do know that on nights like this, more than a thousand people a night are being stopped. Today, to the tents and the police. Get out. You try again? I try again. We come back to Calais for a third trip two weeks later. The fence between the motorway and the jungle is now complete. Another way out closed off. But migrants are still arriving. This is when we meet eight-year-old Khalid, the Syrian boy with a badly injured leg. He had just arrived with his mother. <laughs> Three years ago, Khaled and his mother fled their home city of Aleppo, which has been devastated by the war. Since then, they have moved from country to country, trying to find somewhere to settle and to get treatment for Khaled's leg. The mood around the camp, though, is gloomy. Word is spreading that several people have died trying to get onto trains and lorries. Fadil, still waiting for news of his asylum claim, is worried about the risks people are taking. We've been told that there's um, a part of the cemetery where migrants are buried if their families or friends can't afford to get their bodies home. And then about 10 minutes ago, we were told that uh, there's been a, a baby, an unborn baby that um, died when, her, when its mother fell off, the, fell off a lorry a few days ago and she had a miscarriage. Uh, the mother has disappeared and only two officials and two grave diggers are present. We are asked not to film the burial. Samir was one of at least six who have died in recent weeks. We arrive back at the camp and find Khaled's tent empty. By chance, we catch up with them as they're setting off. Oh, 
They have a two hour walk to the Euro Tunnel Terminal. Then they have to avoid police and try and break into a lorry or jump onto a moving train. Khalid dream after three years a dream in the UK. And why UK Khalid? Let's Britannia moment. My school and my passport and my nationality <laughs> and my to make my leg. I love so much UK. Helmi. يعني حلمي حلمي اني انا اشوف ابني عم يمشي منيح ورجله ما فيها تشوه وقاعد بمدرسته ومارس حياته الطبيعيه حاسس بس شو بدي افكر عم بلاقي الشحنات يلا عم تروح بريطانيا بفكر عم تنفض النار ما عم تنفض ثانك يو جود باي جود باي تيك كير ان شاء الله اذر بيبل ان ذا جروب هاد بيكم نيرفس اند وي وير اسك تو ستوب فيلمينج You've got to wish him good luck, I suppose, don't you? It's a lot to ask of a little boy to go walk two hours and then trying to get on a moving train. Fadl, meanwhile, is going to school. The shack we saw on our first visit is now a fully kitted out classroom and teachers have come from local schools to volunteer. Je suis, je suis, à Calais, à Calais, à Calais. librairie. Voilà. Je suis perdu, indiquez-moi le chemin. Je suis perdu. 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 Oui, je suis perdu. Oh non, 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 je suis perdu. The church is also almost complete. We ask around for David, but people say he's gone. Khaled and his mother, though, had to abandon their attempt. His leg was hurting too much to walk any further. Eh, sorry, Bki, and I'm done. I'm not going to be tired. Why are you going to Britannia? Why are you going to Britannia? And I'm going to be tired. And I'm going to be tired. وبدي اشتكي للملكه اقول للملكه تبع بريطانيا ومن هذا الحكي كثير تازمت نفسيته Khaled and his mother are stuck in a familiar trap they've been told that those Syrians who do make it to Britain are granted asylum the challenge is how to get there ما اصلا هن عم بيسكروا كل الطرق يعني هن اوريدي بدهم يانا وبيرحبوا فينا بس بنفس الوقت ما بيخلونا نوصل بسهوله That was the most riskiest part of life that I've taken, this journey. These children, these mothers, uh, these innocent people are literally at the hands of the sea and at the hands uh, of death.